The movie, The Hooker Experience, in my opinion, is one of the best anti-porn movies I've ever seen. Coincidentally, it's also an extremely useful how-to teaching tool for pimps to train prostitutes in regards to the process of interacting with Johns. And ironically, it's without a doubt one of the greatest training tools of all time in regards to recruiting potential clients interested in hiring porn stars as escorts through illegal venues such as The Luxury Companion, Eros, Backpage, and even Sugar Dating Operations as it teaches and educates males from the general public as to exactly how to connect with and have sex with an individual who's a porn star, escort, or prostitute outside of the legal brothels of Nevada and the United States of America. Why? This movie, produced by Evil Angel Studios, is even available on the open market and why the FBI hasn't taken notice of what this movie is escapes me. But here is my review of the Hooker Experience, which I initially posted on Periscope January 27th, 2018. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a really late webcast, or maybe early, depending on where you are, webcast of Alexandra Mayer's Live. Um, This is going to be a little bit different, because there's something weird going on. I've never done a live um, movie review before, but... I felt the need to review a movie called The Hooker Experience because initially when I found out about it and I found out who directed it, what it was supposed to be about, and the fact that it stars an adult actress who recently passed, I thought to myself, I think that there's a weird connection here, especially considering that it's distributed by Evil Angel. This is probably going to sound shocking to many of you considering some of the thoughts I've shared over the past few days. This was the best adult movie I've ever seen. It really was. This was the best adult movie I ever have seen and I did not watch the actual intercourse scenes in the movie because I just didn't want to and um, I practice celibacy currently in my life but the storyline alone the cinematography the way it was edited it should not be in the gonzo category this is something new and what I'm wondering here is um, exactly what powers that be that control the adult entertainment industry don't want this movie to be known about that much because there's something about this movie that really (laughs) it, it shouldn't there's things in it that really shouldn't be common knowledge from my perspective and it is just shocking to me that you would have someone who's an adult entertainment industry veteran produce this unless they have a plan so I'm just going to go through my notes here first off I was incorrect when I said that this movie is likely a parody of an entity called the luxury companion. Now, when I saw an interview with Kevin Moore on YouTube where he's promoting this movie, right? He's explaining that he, he really didn't get he didn't really give his own movie enough justice in the way that he 
provide a bit of a synopsis. Um, I was told to ask you about one of your new series. It's called um, Cooker Experience. Can yeah. you maybe tell me about that? Sure. It comes out in about a week and a half or so, right at the end of January. It's basically the two is set from Evil Angel. Okay. Um, it's sort of like trying to get inside the minds of someone as they experience seeing high end escorts. Okay. So, to give you an idea, it's like the whole process. So, it's hiring the hooker, finding her on the website, hiring okay. the escort, talking to her booker, talking to her on the phone, negotiating on it. Mm -hmm. Though it's not a necessarily a big feature. It's right. interconnected over a fake website called The Hooker Experience, uh, okay. which they use in the movie, an acronym T-H-E, uh, yeah. which if you have ever gone into the subculture of escorts, there are social networking sites where you yeah. can procure escorts. So this movie is actually a primer for someone who may want to spend time with an escort who may be available through the Luxury Companion, Preferred 411, who may be listed on the Erotic Review, possibly on Backpage, or even a Sugar Daddy dating website. And that's what's shocking to me. Because I always thought that that was supposed to be something that is kept on the down low, but it's all in this movie. It's basically a teaching tool. This is a how-to movie for someone from the general public, from mainstream society, who <laughs> may make the choice to become a John. It's also a teaching tool for any individual, realistically, not just female, but maybe male also, who may want to be a quote-unquote provider. I mean, <laughs> I kind of wonder if there are pimps or madams out there who are recommending this movie to the individuals that they represent. Because I'm shocked. I mean, really, you could cut all of the intercourse or the sexual scenes out of this movie, splice it together, and it would probably be successful on Netflix considering the storyline and the level of acting by the adult actresses in this movie. This could be like a regular movie. And I'm not recommending that you buy this movie. I'm not recommending that you watch this movie, but I'm telling you what this movie is because it's very interesting to me that this movie, the director at least, is linked to the death of not just one porn star, but two, his wife and one of the women who stars in the final scene of this movie, um, especially considering what this movie is about. Right now, these deaths are being used as a political tool in a lot of ways when it comes to online bullying. But I don't think, just considering what this movie is, that ugh, I'm just going to say it. You know what I think? And I said this a little bit earlier today. I'm not sure if I said it in the webcast that I was able to get online or the one I didn't. But I think that there is someone attached to the escort industry who might be trying to punish Kevin Moore. And I think that this whole concept of a fictitious gay mafia and um, this fictitious gay mafia being attached to bullying is a cover in regards to silencing Kevin Moore's creativity. I'll just start from my process of watching this movie. Now, I was actually going to go to an adult video store to try to actually buy this movie in person, you know, so I could have it as, you know, a DVD or something. 
and it was produced in 2013, so none of the adult video stores, at least in my area that I was willing to travel to, were carrying it. I did call around. So I had to go on one of the adult video websites to rent it or lease it, okay? Um, from the very start, I mean, this movie is slick. It looks great. From the very start, the um, introduction actually reminded me a little bit of uh, Josh Whedon's The Dollhouse. You, you know, it's it, it kind of has like a techie kind of vibe to it, the way that the animation is when, when it introduces the various performers that are going to be in the movie or that are in the movie. It, it, I loved the music in the movie. It reminded me of like, a, it was kind of like a sun lounger, electronic, emotional kind of a feel to it. Very dramatic. I, uh, let's see, where do I even want to go from here? Well, like I said, I didn't watch the sexual scenes in the movie, but I did notice that the movie did not utilize barrier protection. That's my criticism, especially considering what the movie is about, because considering that it essentially is a training tool <laughs> of sorts, you would think that, you know, that's something that would have been emphasized, but it wasn't, which again ties into this whole gay versus straight debate because people on the straight side of the industry do not want to utilize barrier protection and they're blaming you know all these groups that are focusing on performers health for basically punishing them because of supposed practices that are you know common on the quote unquote gay side of the industry but you know, there is no gay, gay or straight side of the industry. It's all the same, so it has to be standardized. So that was really my only criticism. All the scenes, you know, because I did watch the tail end of the of each scene with each performer, I did notice that the ending seemed to be on the face, which really was always my turnoff about being a performer. But only with four of performers did it end that way. The last one, which is ironically the one who is now dead, Yurizan Beltran, that was not how the scene ended with her. <laughs> so, you know, I'll get back to that point later. Um, so anyway, the one thing that I did take away from this website before I get into scene by scene, how I felt about scene by scene. The hooker experience is an actual domain that has been registered to promote this movie. But what I'm wondering is the way that the website was an integral part of the storyline. I mean, at some point, the director, I guess if prostitution was ever made legal across the board in America, he could take, he could feasibly or theoretically take that website and turn it into a real life hub and social, um, social networking site for prostitutes the way that it was an integral part of the storyline because it, it kind of merged all of the different ways that people from the general populace get in contact with the various types of prostitutes from the porn star prostitute to the professional who is discreet who you don't know about to um the casual sugar baby to uh the lower end girl who might be pimped through back page. I, I mean, the whole thing, it's, it's so horrific in a way, but escorting has, it is a part of our society. And one thing that I did pick up on when it came to the various Kevin Moore interviews that I've watched over the couple days 
past couple of days since I've been researching August Ain's death is that he does seem to have a bit of a European mentality when it comes to sex workers. He seemed to really enjoy his trip to Germany and I can see why. So without further ado, let me get to scene one. All right. Now, first off, each scene it was kind of labeled except for scene one. Scene one just starts out with a little bit of text that says Los Angeles, and then it shows a time, which I think was 11.38 in the morning. And I guess that's supposed to be a clue for like, hey, if you want to just see a girl who you meet through maybe a preferred 411, a site like that, you should probably call early in the afternoon. Was that the message? I think it was. Um, he, again, he didn't really title this particular scene, but the rest were titled, unless I just missed the title. But here's what was freaky about the first scene. The actress is known as Gia DeMarco. Um, I think I'd heard the name before, but I hadn't really seen what she looked like. When they cut to her face, I thought it was August Ames. August Ames with the dark hair. I don't know what hair color she had before she passed, but if she had that dark hair, she and Gia DeMarco could have been, they could have passed for siblings. So that freaked me out a little bit. But um, it, it was it, it was really well scripted, if it was indeed scripted and not off the cuff. Um, this particular scene, it, it reminded me of something that maybe could have been arranged through, like I said, that preferred 411 website, or maybe even something like Eros.com, an independent girl. Uh, it really, it, it really did kind of take you step by step, if you're not familiar with that process, of meeting a, uh, <laughs> I, I want to say woman of the evening, but in this case, a woman of the early afternoon it takes you the process, through the process of how to um, introduce yourself, how to communicate with the person, um, the information that you should provide. Like I said, it trains a, a woman who might be looking to get into that line of work, and I again, I don't recommend it. What questions to ask? Um, what information you should try to gather from the person. I mean, the whole thing is dangerous because really anyone who is a um, sex worker could also easily work double duty as an extortionist. <laughs> I've always thought that. So, um, you, you know, that's why I don't think anyone should engage in this kind of activity, especially if you, if you, if you care about your health. But um, it, it is what it is. The scene was very stylized, extremely so. And again, this video shouldn't be really considered gonzo in my opinion because it was too well done. I, I, I haven't seen anything like that before. Very, very well done. So I thought it was interesting how he showed um, how he texted her upon his arrival. I mean, again, he showed every single little detail. It was so true to life from my perspective. Um, my favorite part about the first scene was when he's in the, in the loft complex, you know, which I guess was supposed to be a hotel, but maybe not. I don't know. It was her in call. He had to go to the in call. And um, he's walking, he gets into the elevator, and as he exits the elevator and is walking down the hallway, all of a sudden, there's this heartbeat sound effect. And that was very clever from my perspective, because I think that's how a guy would feel as he's going to meet a... Um, provider for the first time or maybe one that he never actually encountered before it was almost a charming kind of detail it's like boom, 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 boom. and as she opens the door you don't even hear her talking 
you just still hear the heartbeat as he's like, you know, looking her up and down and everything. You're like, whoa. So, um, <laughs> it was very relatable, I'm sure, to many male viewers who would um, choose to watch this. It was relatable from my perspective as um, someone who's worked in adult entertainment. I, I actually think it would be interesting for there to be a movie put out where um, it's the opposite of that. Maybe it could be called the John experience. I don't really know. But anyway, um, he even kind of goes over what you should wear <laughs> because you don't see him. You, you do kind of see his reflection, though, when he turns off his phone after he texts the girl to let her know that he's in the parking lot and he needs to know what room or apartment she's in. You you only get very small glimpses of his face and he has a very unassuming look, but it's a mask. And I think that that's the genius of it. Here's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out what in the world Kevin Moore is doing. If you ever see this, Kevin Moore, what are you doing? Are you trying to be a pornographer? Are you trying to secretly be an anti-porn person to reveal all this stuff? Or anti-adult industry or anti-sex work? Because you're telling too much just on scene number one. Or are you trying to lay the foundation for yourself to be super pimp of the world <laughs> by turning the hooker experience domain at some point in the future into the ultimate hub for people to book providers through. That's what is going through, going on in my mind. And um, it's going to be so interesting to see if this movie some, somehow ties into some of these porn star deaths. It's weird. So anyway, scene two. <laughs> 